Being a good driver on the track or in a sim is about more than just raw pace and the ability to waggle your finger while overtaking someone. Sometimes winning races comes down to the little details, details that might seem a bit boring at first, like preserving the pretend rubber on the virtual tires of your simulated vehicle. But you know what's never boring? Winning. So let's learn a bit about tire management in sim racing, a little detail that leads to big results. Let's start with a basic question. Why do you have to manage your tyres? Simply put, it's because tyres change their molecular structure and shed bits of rubber when they get too hot. And when that happens, you lose grip. But how about an even more fundamental question? Why do tyres overheat? Here comes the science bit. Tyres are the point of contact between your car and track. When you turn into a corner, you're exerting lateral forces which cause friction between the rubber of your tyre and the track surface. That creates heat energy and when the chains of molecules called polymers that make up the rubber get hot, they start to deform. Over time, some of them will be destroyed altogether. Putting too much heat into tyres for too long is bad. Car tyres are designed specifically to grip the road or track surface. In many categories of motorsport, slick tyres are used, which means their tread is completely flat with no grooves. They find grip by being pliable, essentially moulding to the shape of the hard tarmac beneath them. That's when they're new at least. But after you've worn or overheated tyres, because those polymers that make up their structure have changed, they're not as elastic as they once were. They don't mould to the shape of the road anymore. Essentially, they're holding onto the road with a looser grip. What that means for you in the driving seat is longer braking distances and slower cornering speed. And of course, ultimately, that means slower laps. So, keeping tyres in operable temperature range for as long as possible means you can drive faster for longer. There are two sides to tyre management. One is all about driving style and the other's all in the setup. Let's talk about driving style first. As you've probably noticed, cars have two front tyres and two rears, and different types of corner cause the fronts and rears to degrade separately. For fronts, it's those high-speed turns like the Maggots, Beckett's Chapel sequence at Silverstone, basically all of Paul Ricard, and that famous Turn 8 at Istanbul Park. Since you're entering the corner already at high speed, your rears aren't scrabbling for traction, but your fronts are having to lead the way as you turn in. All that load you're putting on the fronts wears them out over time. It's not easy to manage this degradation, but the best way to do it is by minimizing steering angle, so not turning in too sharply, and avoiding having to make adjustments mid-corner. So, in an ideal world, every corner should look like one smooth motion on your steering wheel. Now the rears. These little troopers tend to wear out on the exits of really sharp turns, known as traction zones. Think of those first two corners at Austria, the chicanes at Canada, and turn one at Spa. You're leaving the corner having scrubbed off loads of speed to hit the apex, and naturally, you're looking to get back on the power as soon as possible. But if you do it too soon, you'll shoot more power through the rear axle than the tyres can deal with and they'll slip around on the track surface instead of propelling the car forwards. This sends the temp skyrocketing. Thankfully, it's a bit easier to manage than the front tyre wear. Just go smoother on the throttle on corner exits and again, minimise any movement on the steering wheel. If you're having to correct the car as you go up through the gears, you're accelerating too hard. So, front tyres drive smoother, rear tyres... Um, drive smoother. Easy. Okay, not easy. If it was easy, everyone would drive like that in the first place, but conceptually at least, it's simple. For more tips on how to improve your smoothness, watch the pros. Check out elite sim racers on their streams and try to mimic their inputs on the steering wheel. In the end, it will make you quicker and kinder on your tyres. The other aspect of looking after your rubber happens before you even hit the track, and it's all about a good setup. The biggies here are toe and camber, which determine the angle of your wheel on the track. The more tyre is in contact with the track surface, the higher the wear. Introducing more of an angle does impact grip though, so there's definitely a trade-off to consider here. Tyre pressure also plays a big role in wear. Higher pressure tyres will run at higher temps and therefore their performance will drop off faster. Then there's gearing. Tighter gear ratios in which you're whizzing through the lower gears really quickly are more likely to result in wheel spin, heating up the rears and degrading them faster. Setting a more open gear ratio with bigger gaps between the gears will lessen tyre wear at the expense of slower acceleration. 
All in all, it's a game of balance and compromise when you're building a setup to look after your tyres, and you have to consider whether the time you'll be giving up by driving a slower setup is really worth it. If you'll be driving slower over the course of the race than the aggregate 20 seconds it usually takes to make a pit stop and put on fresh tyres, well, it's a bit of a Pyrrhic victory, isn't it? Find a setup that makes sense for the way you race. So let's round it up. With a winning combo of smooth driving and smart setup, and spending a bit of time seeing how it's done by the top sim racers, you can make your tyres last longer in any discipline and save yourself an extra pit stop that your opponents might be forced to take. Not as immediately satisfying as driving down the inside of a hairpin to nick a place, but victory tastes pretty sweet however it's served, doesn't it? Do you have your own tips for saving tyre wear? If so, let us know about them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell to make sure you never miss a vid from us. And as always, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the vid. Catch you next time.